You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. What is going on, Asker Diecast Collectors and Diecast Reviewers on YouTube? This is Original Big Bright here, and welcome back to another new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, hosted by me, Original Big Bright. As always, guys, I'm bringing y'all your weekly NASCAR Diecast News throughout each and every month until the very end of the wonderful 2017 NASCAR Diecast season. And we got ourselves a lot of cool news to talk about, starting off with your new, newly released Diecast that just came in this week from our good friends at Plan B Sales, KC Diecast, and Lesher's Diecast, and any of the local Diecast dealers that sell Lino Racing Diecast. And we also do got some new pre-orders uh, regarding from the Richmond race and the Talladega race as well, all the pre-orders that came in around that time. But with also pre-orders guys we also got some newest cancellations as well um some more xfinity cars have been canceled and some cup cards as well but we'll get into that very shortly and we also do got some more information about the 2017 toyota molds guys we do have some prototype pictures courtesy from lionel racing and their youtube um series of fix and we're gonna get all into this latest information and more as an NASCAR diecast news starts right now but before we do that guys we're gonna take we're gonna take things back a bit and look back at la at the last episode of the NASCAR diecast news with its best selling diecast and worst selling diecast from NASCAR diecast news 173. Alright guys, welcome to NASCAR Diecast News. I'm your host, Reg Big Brian, and today we'll be bringing you guys your, um, starting things off with your newly released Diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales, Casey Diecast, and Lesher Diecast. As always guys, I highly encourage you guys to check out those Diecast dealers or any of your local Diecast dealers, and you can get all these Diecasts right there, like I just said. Uh, I'll provide the link in the description if you guys do want to go and order these if they're not sold out like they were on the last episode. But uh, first things up, we're going to start off with the 164s, and we do got some really cool 164s, and uh, first one up. Up. It is going to be good old Clint Boyer and his number 2017 14 Mobile One Ford Fusion. I'm glad I did not say Chevrolet SS. Uh, it's starting to grow on me now that they are in the Fords now, um, especially since we're now in the month of May uh, for NASCAR. So, <clears throat> yeah, so um, yeah, we finally got the first release for the Clint Boyer car, and uh, you know, not really much too, too, too much to say about this, but however, I have noticed that uh, we finally got. Um, Excuse me, there's a burp count right there. Um, this is why you don't eat or drink during, uh, before an Escort Decades News episode. Uh, lesson learned. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Mobile One Ford Fusion, guys, you know. Uh, uh, definitely a much more simpler paint scheme that I decided to go for this year instead of last year's, which was the Pegasus. Uh, they decided to bring that back, which was really cool for uh, Tony Stewart. But uh, but yeah, a lot more different than this car. It kind of reminds me of Tony Stewart's Americana car uh, that NASCAR Authentics released uh, in uh, Wave 2 for um, last year. So Or Wave 3, sorry about that. But 
Yeah, Wave 2 actually, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, a, a nice looking car. It's simple, but I like it. Uh, the red numbers definitely grow on to me and it goes well with the Mobile One colors as well. And also what I just noticed that I got completely off topic on is that this car, um, as you guys know, it does not have the Monster Energy logos because they can't do that. They can't produce those on the 160s because um, these are technically marketed for you know a younger audience for any of you guys who are mostly watching this channel. Um, and I like 164s as well, but um, yeah, that is kind of a big problem, but you know that is something that's standard for Lionel and the licensing rights with Monster Energy. Um, but we do have the last names on the back of the die cast, you can clearly see right there on the box and the uh, and the in the in the display picture. So um, yeah, it's a little accurate, and we also get the update NASCAR logo as well, so that's really cool right there. But overall, decent looking car, you know, it's simple, but I like it. Uh, next one up is your Talladega winner, guys. It's Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s 2017 Sunny D Ford Fusion. And man, does this die cast look really nice. I know Race Day 2011 really loves this car, especially that letter D. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to roast them right there because that D is very carbonated. Or um, that's Rob's favorite letter. From if you guys saw a Sunny D review, then you will clearly see how this, how that, how I'm putting this joke right away on this car. But uh, very similar to last year's car. I mean, a little difference in the contingencies, and yet again, um, we got the update NASCAR logo right under the A post, and of course the um, name banner um, on the back windshield. So really cool right there. But um, still a really nice looking car. If you uh, failed to get this car from last year especially in uh, wave 9 for NASCAR Authentics of last year and this is a really cool car to get if you haven't picked it up yet nice bright car and uh, if you're a fan of Sunny D I would highly recommend getting it uh, rounding off more with some 164s we got Chase Elliott's 2017 Sun Energy 1 Chevrolet SS and a very similar car to last year's but however if you notice that the name rail was on the front uh, because this was a uh, this is basically the same car as last year, so of course Lionel just completely, uh, <clears throat> so this is, uh, this is before the Monster Energy logo controversy release, so yeah, this car is sadly inaccurate, but it does have the NASCAR logo, the update NASCAR logo on the A post, so that's really cool right there. Still a nice looking paint scheme, um, I don't know if it's just the picture or not, but just now I know the rims look a little dim, it's probably the lighting in the photo, but, uh, still a nice looking car if you haven't got this car yet. Um, would highly recommend getting it, but uh, not too much of a difference from last year's, but still a nice looking car regardless. Um, so yeah, and rounding off with the 164s guys, we got the um, <clears throat> Aircom Rollis STP 164 and um, this car and the Sun Energy 1 car that I just that I just recently talked about were both ran at the Marnsville race this year, so that's really cool right there. The 2017 uh, STP 4 Fusion, the iconic uh, <clears throat> The iconic bright red and blue for uh, Richard Petty Motorsports. Um, the only single car team uh, for the 43 this year because, you know, Brian Scott left last year. But a really nice looking car. And I think this was the first car that was released uh, from what I know uh, that Lionel posted for updating the Monster Energy logos. But, of course, this is the 160 board, so we'll not have that. But it does have the accurate... Um, back windshield and the update NASCAR logo so uh, that's about as accurate you can get but still a really nice looking car uh, we're finally glad I got this that we got this car produced because I remember last year it was canceled um, it set instead of the Daunt throwback car but a uh, nice little touch I like the additional red that's on this car um, you know very nice looking car indeed I really like this and now we're going on to the 124s guys and we're gonna start things off with a 2016 diecast <clears throat> And it's going to be on any Kyle Larson fans out there. You're going to be very excited to see this car. It is his, <clears throat> the Daunted Throwback Target 124. And uh, for any any car fans out here who are watching this video, you guys will automatically know what this throwback is. But for any guys who aren't really familiar with IndyCar, um, you know, I'll give you guys a little history. So this car, um, you know, Kyle Larson had a really cool looking throwback throughout the past two years. He drove the metal yellow car in 2015 in um <clears throat> yeah 2015 for the days of thunder uh, tribute throwback but now last year he decided to do a throwback to uh target's first start in auto racing which was uh eddie cheever's 1990 uh indy car 
um, for Chip Ganassi Racing. So really nice touch right there. I do like the retro Target logo that we got and all the you know the spot side sponsors that we got for Target like Coca-Cola, Banana Boat, Elkin, and etc. <laughs> so um, really nice touch to, touch to it. And I know this is the 124, but I'm really excited to see the 164. But if you're a Kyle Larson fan out there or a big IndyCar fan in general, I would highly recommend getting this car. I know my friends Race Day 2011 and Ganassi Fan 142 are definitely going to get this car because they are Ganassi fans after all and Kyle Larson fans. So shouts to, the, to those two guys that are really great friends and you should check them out. Uh, follow them on their social media. <coughs> Uh, next one up, we got some Casey Keene die cast, and we got his 2017 LiftMaster 124. And this car is only going to be an exclusive um, in the 124 because the 164 version was canceled. But a really nice looking car. I do like this car a lot more than last year's. And uh, if you guys notice right away that this car below the A post has the Monster Energy logo, um, Cup Series logo on it, which is really interesting. Um, considering how you know the whole controversy is going on with the licensing issues with Monster Energy and Pepsi products, because you guys know Henry Motorsports uh, sponsors now do, and that is a rival to Monster, which Monster is a Coca Cola company. So you guys can see right there, Pepsi or Coke, big rivals. They don't want to self promote each other. <laughs> uh, talking about it's all about the competition, guys. That's all what uh, you know NASCAR promotes as well. Competition with sponsors, and um, yeah, I think that's really interesting to see that happening. But we don't have the Monster Energy logos on the on the windshields. Uh, and so yeah, this car is technically inaccurate. And what's also notice is that this car is only gonna be on the hood open series model. Um, so it's on the gold series model, which is very interesting. I mean, I do see some detail on the tires, but yeah, only the hood opens and that really stinks for any Casey Kane vans out there. Um, and this car looks familiar because he drove this car at Las Vegas, Charlotte, and Michigan. But uh, I like the new touch that LiftMaster has, a nice refreshing look. And I do like the metallic uh, finish that LiftMaster decided to get. However, the die cast didn't really live up to it since uh, it is kind of inaccurate. And also, it's only hood open. So, very disappointing for some Casey Kane fans. But uh, still a nice looking car. Just uh, wish the quality was a little better. Um, but that's all I know. <laughs> um, speaking of some more Casey Kane die cast, we got his unique first car that he just recently ran at Talladega and he's also be running this car in the July Daytona race so that's really cool right there um, yeah it's, like I said similar to the LiftMaster car this car is only gonna be opening on the hood and as you can see right there it doesn't have the right banners um, for the for the windshields <laughs> it's just completely flip-flop and once again uh, lying over the inconsistency you got the Monster Energy logo on the eight, below the eight post which of course Henry diecast aren't supposed to have that so uh, but still a nice looking car um, probably I would recommend getting the 164 when that comes out um, <clears throat> And let's see, and also to touch up on the Chase Elliott Sun Energy One car, I know I just recently just reviewed this, but that car also has the Monster Energy logo uh, under the A post as well. So yeah, Lionel love being inconsistent, guys. <laughs> How they said, oh, we're not gonna have any Monster Energy logos on any Henrik Dijkes. Well, look at that right there, guys. That is, uh, uh, Lionel is just about as inconsistent as NASCAR is with their uh, cautions and their rules. <laughs> uh, don't they just go well together? Uh, let's see right here and the last uh, 124 that we'll be touching over today is your Daytona 500 champion uh, for this year Kurt Busch and his number 41 Monster Energy Ha CNC Automation Ford Fusion and this car looks very familiar because he drove this car at Martinsville and Las Vegas of this year uh, I should say Las Vegas and then Martinsville if you guys really want to be orderly correct But uh, this is of course going to be an exclusive because you guys know Monster Energy cannot make a die cast in the 164 line So um, if you're a Kurt Busch fan, we highly recommend getting this especially if you love the uh, the basic black the matte black and the green that goes along with the Monster Energy colors are really nice and I think a lot of people are going to see this car in Victor Lane not only because the sponsors Monster Energy but Kurt Busch is a very talented driver and he's still got some years left in him for being the older sibling for Kyle Busch so uh, really cool right there you know very similar to last year's but uh, if you're a big fan of Kurt Busch and the new change with Ford then you'll probably like this car regardless of being it 
uh, being placed on a base because of the um, <clears throat> the monster energy controversy. So yeah, um, overall guys, some of these die casts were really interesting, but um, I think the 164 has really nailed it for this uh, for uh, this episode. Um, so yeah. All right guys, and now we're going on to our pre-orders and we're gonna start things off with um, what happened at Richmond from two weeks ago since every NASCAR Die Cast News episode that we're doing now. Um, since not that much news has been coming out, we've been doing this bi-weekly now. So every other week, a new NASCAR Die Cast, new NASCAR I guess news episode will be coming out so um, that's why we're going to be talking about the Richmond race which of course was a decent race but of course at the end it had to be from Joey Logano um, so Joey Logano ended up winning at Richmond for another time um, for the second time in his career from what I know of but um, yeah this is a really cool looking race win that I, of course a lot of Logano fans are going to like but however though his car was caught um, well, was caught under inspection and he was penalized and fined. Didn't take out the win, taken from him, but now he is not in the playoffs now uh, due to a weird modification with with the rear suspension, from what I know. So, um, yeah, very unfortunate to see that, especially for any Logano fans out there, but for any not so much Logano fans like myself, that is a sign of relief. But however, this die, this die cast is still available for pre order um, since it is Logano's first win for this year. Um, and speaking of first wins, guys, we do got, um, like we just recently talked about, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We gotta mention that name again, guys, because of course he just recently won at the Talladega race for the Geico 500 uh, at Talladega, which looked like the Fords were really fast, and it was really cool to see Roush get their first win since Sonoma 2014, which was uh, Carl Edwards' last year in Roush. So really nice to see them back at Victory Lane since Roush Racing is only a two-car team now. Remember how dominant they were back in the early 2000s and uh, mid-2000s, just you know incredible but it looks like they're starting now pick up their pace now especially for this year so really cool seeing snails jr's fifth third bank car uh that's available pre-order and also his Talladega race win as well uh, and yes this will come with the tape and hopefully it won't be like a fail like lionel did um, with the Tony Stewart Brickyard car from uh, last year. So, um, but you know, if, if they can make that, and we know they can make the tape, I mean, just look at the 2014 Daytona 500 win from Dale Earnhardt Jr. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how this race win car goes, but it's only in the 124 scale for now, but who knows, that might change. And a special pre-order coming up, guys, that's not available at Lionel Racing, but it's at a special website, and it is uh, Ross Chastain's 2017 Gamecock Truck 124. Um, so yeah, all the partners at Gamecock and um, the team that's behind this, I can't remember who the team is because uh, it's a very unfriendly car, but yeah, they are going to try to get this car made. Um, and the first 500 orders of this car that are pre-ordered will be autographed by the driver himself, Ross Chastain. So that's really nice right there. But you can't get this line on racing, guys. You can only pre-order this uh, in the 124 scale at bowlinmotorsports.com slash GameStock. Gamecock diecast. Once again, that's bowlinmotorsports.com slash Gamecock diecast. Alrighty, and I'll put the link in the description. You guys do want to pre-order that car because it's really cool to see that we have, that um, you know some low-funded uh, trucks are going to be produced. Um, so that's really nice right there. I mean, it is going to be on a Chevrolet mold, so that's already familiar with all the GMS trucks that are being made from INL. So uh, hopefully we'll see more of these diecasts pretty soon, um, as I just wish we could get a 164 produced. Um, you know, <laughs> that's just so ironic that, um, you know, Lionel has not made a 164 yet for the truck diecast, but they've done for the 124s. But, you know, it is what it is. 124s sell more, so I understand that. And now we're going to go on to the cancellations, guys. And this is, of course, always the turning point of the episode where, you know, know everyone starts putting on their frowny face <laughs> but um yeah guys we do got five new cancellations to uh, talk about um to break news as well if you guys haven't really paid attention to our social media play page um so first one up guys the uh for the the, the cars that did not make dmp first one up is kevin harvick's 2017 bush bucks car and this car he just recently ran at bristol but uh, not to worry about um, anything big but uh the 124 elite version has been canceled so um for any for uh, rcc elite members out there who really screwed out of luck because this car is canceled in the elite version 
However, the 124 ARC standard version and the 164 version are still available for pre-order, guys. So uh, there's a sign of relief right there. But not going to be a sign of relief for these next few diecasts, guys. We mentioned how we're going to have more Xfinity diecasts. Well, how about more Justin Allgaier diecasts being canceled? It has been a hell of a hectic year for Justin Allgaier diecasts. And uh, we do got two new cancellations to tell you guys about. And there's probably no hope for Justin Allgaier fans out there or for the diecast collectors as well. Because this 2017 Advanced Auto Parts car has been unfortunately canceled in both scales. Man, if there was a Justin Algar car that I was really looking forward to, this would have been the one right here. I love the colors on this car. The red and the, the red, the black, and the yellow look really nice. And man, I just would have loved to seen this car being produced. But unfortunately it got canceled, which man, I just, <laughs> I, I think after that, that is really no hope at all. So just very, very unfortunate seeing this car getting canceled. Like I said, I'm a big fan of this paint scheme. It looks really nice. And I, I had a feeling that, you know, I thought it was going to make MOQ. But nope, it got canceled in both scales. Even the 124 version, which is going to be autographed. So that's really unfortunate. But um, he did drove this car at Texas. And he's also going to be driving this car at Darlington and the Charlotte Fall Race. But unfortunately, it doesn't really matter anymore because the diecast is canceled. And like I said, we still got some more Just Now Guy cars that are canceled his 2017 Chenny Brothers 124 ARC and 164 so both scales have been cancelled in that car as well that one's not so much of a surprise right there because Chenny, bro uh, um, Ch Chenny Brothers whatever kind of name sponsor that is <laughs> kind of a random sponsor but um, he only drove this car at Bristol and you know it's uh, pretty underrated car I can just say that <laughs> but um I had a feeling this car would be canceled. I don't think it was going to get enough recognition. So, very unfortunate right there. And, um, I, like I said, there's probably no hope for any Justin Algar cars being produced at all. Because so far, all of his diecasts have been canceled for this year. Including the brand cars. So, it looks like we're not going to get an Algar car for this year. How everything has been going so far. Um, it's very unfortunate. Um, speaking of some more Xfinity diecasts. This one is really going to upset a lot of people. And a lot of people thought this car made MOQ. Hell, I even thought this car made MOQ. But, nope. And what MOQ means is the minimum amount of quantity that the that line of racing needs in order to get the car produced. So it's like a minimum order number that they need to get the car produced. Basically what I just said, restating. But um, yeah, the Brendan Poole 2017 DC Solar 124 and 164 ARC scales have been unfortunately canceled and man this sucks we got another year with not a brand new pool diecast very unfortunate because this is the only car that they're going to offer for him this year because of course this is the only car that he's driving that he's driven in the xfinity series uh very ironic seeing the, a 48 car in uh, the cancellation list and it's not jimmy johnson fronts <laughs> sorry to say throw it out there but yeah very unfortunate um, you know, especially for any hardcore Brendan Pool fan, Brendan Pool fans out there, I know you guys are very disappointed in seeing this. But um, you know, there's always custom makers, but it's not really much the same thing. But um, man, just very unfortunate to have this car being canceled. But you know, and it is an Xfinity diecast. But you know, I thought there was gonna be some hope for this car, but I guess not. And a wrap up on the cancellations, guys. We got Corey LaJoy's 2017 Bubba Burger Toyota Camry. That's only canceled in the 124 ARC scale. So the 164 is still available for pre-order, guys. Um, and this is the car that he recently drove at Auto Club. But of course, didn't last too long because, you know, Corey LaJoy is like, you know, not really the best driver. I hate to criticize, but every time I see the 83 car, he's always in the wall. So he's like the new Brian Scott, kind of. Uh, <laughs> I hate to say that for a rookie, but, you know. What more have we seen the 83 on the track? I think we see him in the mall than more than what he's seen on the track lately. But uh, you know, there's always some turns and topes for around for BK Racing. But uh, unfortunately, this car has been canceled because you know Corey LaJoy, not really the best performing driver out there, especially in BK Racing. I think Ray Golding's doing a little more better than him. Um, so yeah, just very unfortunate seeing this car getting canceled. But like I said, the 164 version is still available pre-order, and all these diecasts that I just mentioned right here um, are you know. Truly devastating, but what more can you do? Um, we got more Xfinity diecasts that were canceled, and uh, who knows, guys? I think this is gonna be the lowest year that we're gonna have for this year for Xfinity diecast produced, because uh, you know it's not really a popular series anymore. So uh, we'll just uh, see how this year goes on with the rest of the diecast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to our last topic of the show, and it is going to be on some new updated news from the for the 2017 Toyota Mold diecast. We do got some new prototype pictures from our good friends at Lionel Racing, 
And um, here's the latest news that has to uh, that has to do regard with the updated uh, Toyota molds for this year. As you guys are familiar, Lionel, um, you know, we were all wondering uh, as soon as they released the 2017. Um, uh, Toyota Camry for this year. A lot of people were wondering is Lionel ever going to update the Toyotas? Well, they that's definitely one thing that Lionel does do right, and we do got some pictures to show you guys for that. But on on this week, on the latest episode of Lionel Racing's The Fix on Wednesday, May 10th, on their YouTube channel, Lionel Racing has posted. Um, they post their newest episode of The Fix, which a show I would highly recommend checking out, especially if you're a diecast. Uh, if you're a diecast news fan like me as well uh, i even tune in to watch as well to get some of uh, my info and thoughts about this um <clears throat> about this topic so uh we do got um some pictures right here like i said courtesy from Lionel racing uh go and check them out and give them a subscription if you guys want to but um yeah really cool right there as i show you guys the picture right here uh we got the uh, skittles 124 and 164 and the uh, interstate batteries 124 and 164 and we're going to be taking a closer look at this um and give you guys my thoughts on the updates for uh these uh prototypes so they're still prototypes guys but uh, they're looking a lot more better than um than what we previously had with um the rough draft of the prototype that we had from a couple episodes ago early on in this season of the nascar diecast news and on the fix as well so um yeah right here we got the 2017 skittles car that kyle bush has famously drove at the brickyard 400 that he's won in the past two years so i'm assuming he's gonna be driving this car once again i know he did drove a similar paint scheme like this at the talladega race which was a salute scheme but uh that's not something we're gonna be talking about guys we're talking about how this car looks and how accurate it is as you can tell right off the bat it has the monster energy name banner <coughs> and the uh, monster energy nascar cup series logo on the a post but it's only gonna be on the 124 guys because you guys know energy drinks um are not allowed to promote on the 164s because the 124s are considered adult collectibles and yeah the 164s are basically like a kid version of those die casts so not really a good marketing tool and or strategy to promote energy drinks on kids die casts but um at least not on the base that's something that's really cool right there i know a lot of people were very worried but this is a prototype so they might change it at the last minute and put this on a base but for now it looks really nice and i hope we don't get a plastic base on the 124s because uh i'm liking this so far and i also love how the new look of the uh, grill i also love how the grill looks the front grille looks on the um, 124s and the 164s. You can see it's sculpted perfectly. They got all the molds and shapes perfect. And uh, it's also on the EL mold as well for the 164. So uh, very nice. Glad they didn't put it on the PTC mold like they did when they updated the... Um, the Toyotas for 2015 and then they would switch to the EL mold in 2016 so I'm um, glad to see Lionel is back on track with that um, a lot more better progress than they did in 2015 <laughs> but um, also the decals look nice as well but um, yeah really nice looking car and you also see right here um, the driver's name banner is also on the rear windshields <clears throat> and that's gonna be on both scales um, because I don't see why it can't be on both scales, <laughs> but it is. So really nice right there. And we also got uh, the uh, low downforce package on this car. As you guys could tell, the spoiler is very small indeed. It's like very, very tiny. It looks like the size of a razor blade. I'm not saying it's like a razor blade, but it is so tiny that you have to squint to really look at it because it blends in with the background of <clears throat> that Lionel Racing put this die cast to display on but um it is very accurate it does look a little bizarre but it is accurate since you know the nascars this year um that their package for this year has a lower downforce to it so that's really cool right there and a lot of people are wondering if they're gonna do this on the chevrolets and fords but right now it looks like they're thinking at one mold at a time and looks like lionel really nailed this die cast so really looks nice um even though the paint scheme looks similar to last year's, but uh, the mold looks amazing on this. So, so far, so good for the prototypes. Uh, and we also got the Interstate Batteries car as well. So, um, you know, not really a big fan of the paint scheme, but like I said, the mold looks very nice. And from this angle, uh, it kind of looks squarish in my opinion. Um, kind of reminds me of the Xfinity cars a little bit, but um, that's just the new body mold that we have for this, for um, the Toyotas. So, um, you know, like I said, it's got the same features on it, the Monster Energy logos on the, uh, <clears throat> on the 124 and the um you see it's not on the 164 not even cool as i pull award um but you know i do see some irony on this interstate batteries car as you guys remember how you know the monster energy logos are not supposed to be on 164s but look closely on that c post what do you see right there right over right right 
uh, right over by the Stanley Tools logo, there's a NOS Energy logo on the 164. So uh, <laughs> if I do my math correctly, or my observation correctly, NOS Energy is an energy drink. So how come they can get away with it, putting it on the 164, but Monster Energy can't? <laughs> that's just something that's just being a little nitpicky for me, but I know they've done that in the past with a few other cars like Kurt Busch's uh, Haas Johnson throwback car. I know that they even put that car in the in the uh, NASCAR Authentics uh, waves as well. So uh, I don't know. Lionel's, you know, is being inconsistent, but uh, that's something that's just a little nitpick. I have to say right there and a sense of irony as well. As you guys know me, I do like some humor and irony in any of my videos. Uh, just look at my diecast reviews, for example. But uh, anyways, guys, yeah, this is is a really nice looking car um, and overall guys I think Lionel did an amazing job with these they're still prototypes so there could be some slight changes that they will make in the last few minutes um, in the last few months but they're the ET the, the estimated arrival time for these die casts from what Lionel said they said that this will be released around sometime late summer 2017 so if I go to the Walkers Glen race this year uh, for the Cup Series that would be around my time where I could get these die casts so that'd be perfect timer for me um, but um, that's really cool right there. I think that might be a reason why I might go to that race just to see the Toyota diecast in person, see how they look. Because uh, I am a huge fan of Toyota. Uh, you know, let the haters, you know, you know, rot away in the comics. But uh, yeah, I'm a Toyota fan. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I got to say right there. But overall, guys, this has been an episode of the NASCAR diecast news. I hope you guys enjoyed this video series. As always, please give this video a good comment, like if you guys have not already. I highly encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel. Uh, as we be posting, you know, another bi-weekly episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. So tune in two weeks from now or so, because I'll be at the Indy 500 trip once I upload this video. Um, so uh, expect a lot more Indy 500 month videos to come on soon. Um, <clears throat> I know I got a couple diecasts to show you guys and do some more reviews on that very shortly. But um, until then, guys, this is a Ridge of Brink Uh Thank you guys so much for watching once again. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of NASCAR Diecast News. So uh, until then, this is Brian LaFleur, Brian LaFleur Jr. saying sign off, farewell, and uh, let's go Indy.